everyone, this is Heather Smith with Storyville Photography and today I'm going to show you how to achieve this edit. This is where we are going to get started and this is where we are going to end up. A little background information about this image is I used the Canon R5 200mm 2.0f lens. My settings were 2.0f, 320 ISO, and 640 shutter speed. I took this around 5.30pm in the summer months, so the sun was still pretty high in the sky, but we were in a completely shaded area with enough ambient light. I was confident that I could bring up the brightness in Lightroom and not have too much grain in the image, so I decided to keep my ISO a little bit lower at 320. Anyway, I'm in Lightroom now, so I'm going to pull up the shadows 100%, and then I want to try and decrease this like blowout area over there, so I'm going to bring the highlights down completely. I'm going to up the exposure to about eh, like 20, 15, 20%. And I'm going to increase my white balance quite a bit. It's going to turn the image a little bit yellowy, but I like how it affects the skin here. So about 7,000 um, is good. Then I'm going to come down to my HSL panel, and I'm going to go in the luminance slider, and I'm going to choose the orange tones. This will affect their skin and a little bit of their dress and headband. And I'm just going to pull it up till my eye likes it. That looks good to me. And I'm going to come over to the saturation and I'm going to decrease the yellows quite a bit. And I'm going to pull the greens down a little bit. And then I'm going to come down to my, where is it, noise reduction. And I'm going to increase the luminance slider quite a bit. And that's going to help reduce any grain that might have picked up um, from it being on the darker side to begin with. And so with just those few steps in Lightroom, we went from here to here. And now I'm going to do some more fun editing over in Photoshop. Okay, now that I'm in Photoshop, I'm going to select my background layer, and I'm going to hit Command-J, and that's going to duplicate the background layer. I'm going to come up to my filters, and I'm going to go into my Camera Raw filter, and then I am going to come over here to my preset panel, and I'm going to choose the Simplicity number 2 preset from Storyville, obviously. <laughs> And that's going to go on top of my whole image. I'm going to decrease this to about 60-ish uh, percent. And that looks good. That's the before and after there. And now I just want to keep it on my subject. So what I'm going to do is add a layer mask. I'm going to hit Command-I to invert it. I'm going to make sure that I have a soft white brush at 100% opacity. I'm going to expand this brush. And I'm just going to paint it on top of them before and after. And the next thing I'm going to do is come over to my actions panel, select the ultimate dodge and burn, hit play, open up the action, and I'm going to first attack the clothing. I want to have one of the dodge and burn combo for each of my daughters, so I'm going to just hit command J and copy it. Now I have two. I'm going to select the black layer mask, soft white brush, 100% opacity, and I'm just going to take it and paint it on. If you're printing or you're doing this for a client, you might want to zoom in, make sure there's no hailing on the outside because it will look really, really bad. But I'm trying to just do this really quick for you guys. And that looks good to me before and after. Maybe a little bit more up here. Okay. Now I'm going to come over here to my other daughter, and I'm going to do the same thing. And the reason why I like to have two separate layers for each of my subjects is in case I want to change up the opacity to the layer, which I do. I want to crank it just a little bit, but not as much as my oldest daughter. And now I'm going to come over here to the extra dodge. I want to just place that over her headband and a little bit on hers. And that looks good to me. So there's the before and after with the clothing. Now I'm going to come into the dodge and um, burn skin and hair. I'm going to do dodge one. I just want to brighten up Miss Savannah here a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and rub that on her. And as you can see, I went outside the lines, which will not look good on your overall edit. Um, so make sure don't halo. Don't halo, guys. It's a bad look. There we go. And over here, I'm going to... It's kind of off on my screen, but go all the way down to luminosity. And that's just going to change, um, brighten up her skin without increasing the orange in it. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. 
and that looks good to me. I also want to come over here and do her legs a little bit. There. There we go. And now I'm going to come over here to the environment and I'm just going to do the extra dodge. I'm going to expand my brush using the right bracket key and just kind of paint all over here. I'm going to take that to zero and just increase it to where my eye likes it and that looks good. So all together with the ultimate dodge and burn, it made such a huge difference. Love it. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to flatten it so I can run one of my favorite actions, um, painterly. So over in my actions panel, I'm going to hit play. And for here, I'm just going to utilize the painterly base. I already kind of added brightness and all of that with the ultimate dodge and burn. There's different ways you can do this. So I'm going to turn that down to about 70%. And I want to make sure to mask it completely off of my subject's faces, hands, feet. I'm going to mask it off this water. And then I'll leave it on the rest of the image. Ears. And I love what it does to the water and the hair and the clothing. That's the before and after. And the next thing I want to do is run the Storyville tran Tranquil action. It's actually available in stores now, guys. I know you've been asking about it for quite some time now, but I finally got around to adding that over to the shop. I'm going to hit the play button, and I'm going to take a soft white brush at 100% opacity, and I'm going to paint it on fully, and then I'm going to decrease... Um, the opacity so it's not as intense over here in my layers panel. But I like to do this because then I can see where I'm painting. And I'm going to come back and take a little bit off of the, um, the splash there. So it has some of the color tint, um, but not as intense as that. To try and make this quick again with um just like i said to everything else make sure that you're not haloing i would zoom in i would really focus so that there's no halos or like run over on the clothes like what i just did there really get in there and make sure that you got all of the water okay a little bit more in there I don't want to waste too much of your guys' time here, so you get the point. Now what I'm going to do is come over here. I'm going to take the brush at about 50% opacity, but I'm first going to turn the layer down. I like to go to zero and just kind of increase to where my eye likes it. And now with 50% of it, um, I'm going to take a soft black brush and just kind of go over the water there. Beautiful. And that's the before and after with the Tranquil. And the next thing I want to do is add a little bit of sun coming through here. Because um, there is sun, but I want to make it more prominent. I'm going to do the Storyville Ultimate Light Pack Sun 1, drag and drop, or you can go to File, Open, Open JPEG. And that's how you get the overlays in. Screen mode, I'm going to leave it right there. It lined up perfectly for me. And then I want to get rid of the black lines. To easily do that, you just come up here, go to Blur, Gaussian Blur. And I like to do it about 30 or 40%. And that will get rid of the lines right there. Now I'm going to turn this down a little bit. And I'm going to grab um, a layer mask, attach a layer mask right down here. A black brush, 100% opacity. And I'm just going to zoom in. Again, take your time with this, guys. There we go. This is really going to make your subject pop out. Love, love, love it. My girls said that this was their most favorite shoot that they've ever done. We took this when I was visiting friends and family in Michigan, and I wish I had a creek like this right by me. Okay. And that's good enough there. And now the last thing that I want to do is I am going to add a fresh layer and I'm going to come over here into my sparkle dust collection. Um, I love these brushes. They're brand new to the shop as well, guys. You can find them over on the website. 
and I'm going to take brush five and this you can use them for literally anything it's so great I like to sample like colors that are already in the image um, so for example this water I'm gonna hold down the option key and it's gonna bring up this eyedropper and that's gonna give me like a tone from the what's already in the water expand these a little and there we go some little water bokehs with this brush and then I'm gonna come over and do sparkle dust dust brush one and add a little bit more it really just adds to the dimension of the image Look at that before and after and did I do a before and after of the Sun that's the before and after and that's about it friends um, thanks for watching this is where we got started and this is the final product I hope everybody has a wonderful day you can find everything I used here at www.storyablephotography.com link is in description bye guys